It's another K-Town beat. One, two, three, let's go. YouTube, 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 YouTube. It's your boy, Mr. Outlaw. I'm back today. I got the ball fade for y'all, the classic. The ball fade, right? And, you know, me being from the South, Houston, Texas, you know what I mean? Like, this was my era. You know and I mean? Like, the ball fade is popular where I'm from. You know what I mean? So, if you ain't have a ball fade, you wouldn't doing nothing. You know, uh, south side, let the top down, let the sun hit the fade. Some of y'all might know about that. Some of y'all might not. But anyway, so... I grew up doing ball fade, so I can do a ball fade. I could do this whole haircut in like 12 minutes if I really wanted to, right? But, you know, I don't really try to do that no more. If I was in a competition, I'd kill it, right? As far as how the speed and things like that. But what I want to say about this is the first thing you want to do is get your guideline, right? You just want to come up like halfway, you know, between the ear and in the top of the head. So and get it as clean as possible. I'm using the wild balding clipper to make my, so to make my, um, to make my balding process easier and to use my trimmers less, right? Because, you know, you can have different trimmers that you use to, for balding, you know, or you can use those clippers, you know what I mean? For balding, the, you know, take less stress off of your trimmers, basically, right? To not dull them out so fast. So then, right, you want to comb the top of the hair out. After you comb the top of the hair out, he got waves. It's kind of thick. So we're going to use a one guard here, right? So when we're using a one guard, we want to kind of do it like medium. I don't want to use it all the way close because I kind of want it thick a little bit. And we just want to ride the direction other ways, right? The flow pattern. You see what I'm doing right here? His ways are popping out. We still maintain the integrity of the darkness, right? You you don't want to do it where it's too low and the waves can't form or you can't see the forms of the waves, right? And don't press down too hard while you're doing this. Just, you know, nice, medium, medium pressure, right? not too light not too hard right in the middle right so you do that you follow the flow pattern and once you get it down to the length that the desired length that you want then you can go in and start fading okay now so the last couple of videos i've been showing y'all a different way of approaching your phase and i'm gonna continue that process so you see here that's about how high you want to go now normally i would use no guard here but i'm using a one guard close i only want to use two guards maximum minimum or maximum really on a haircut for me if i can get away with using a one guard and a one and a half guard i'm good so I'm showing you a way how to just use those two guards to do this haircut. So we came up with a one guard because we want to make a hard guideline to be our second guideline, right? Because you want to see the difference in, you know, the levels that you fade in between the two. So between the first guideline and the second guideline, and you saw that motion I was just doing, I'm kind of just raking. I'm going with the grain of the hair with the same one guard because I knocked the bulk down off of it. Now, you see the two positions, those two guidelines. Now, after you make it with the one guard, you can come back and just clean up that bottom line. So now you can kind of see the transformation happen, the transition, right? Between that first guideline where I'm actually at right now and the one above it. So this is where the the blurriness comes in. You know how somebody say, oh man, that fade blurry. It's because of this area, those that area in between two points, right? Between light and dark is transitioning, right? And that's how you get a fade because it goes from light to dark, right? So anyway, now after you do that, you can kind of get it as close as possible, bald as possible on the bottom. 
but it's not necessary that you get it all the way, bro. But really close, right? So after that, you come back with your one and a half guard. Like I told you, I'm only using two guards. I use the one guard, and I'm using the one and a half guard. Now, where the bulk is is where my concentration is, and the reason why I'm using the one and a half guard right here because I still want it to be thick, but I want to work my way down so it blends into the area where the first guideline was. So now when you break it down this way you can focus just on two points you can focus on the bottom and you can focus on the top and the in between should meet up right so that's what we're doing we're trying to let it meet up in between that's what you're doing you're letting the dark and the light meet up in between to get a nice blend transition fade blurry whatever you want to call it this is the reason why you're doing it this way it's easy you can see it that's why i use this system a lot i you know you can go with the traditional way which is nothing wrong with that either whatever works for you you know sometimes on video i just want to share different tricks right to it's to getting the same result right because you can go left right round and back and still get to the same place you know what i mean it just depends but whatever is easy for you right so after we use our one and a half we go open the close with our one and a half all the way down until you know we can't use it anymore so now i still got that bottom line right there I want to clean it out and it still look thick right at the top if you can see it like right where I just brushed it but we're gonna fix that too so anyway to finish up the bottom line and get it to blend in and become blurry to you you have to use the corners of the blade right the corners of the blade is for it's for fading right it's for blending when you use the corners of the blade and not the whole blade. When you use the whole blade, you're trying to make a guideline, right? But when you're using the corner, you're picking and choosing, you're detailing. You, you letting, you know, letting them know, you, you know, letting the clipper know what you want to do. So this is a, definitely a technique you should incorporate into your haircuts if you haven't already, right? But once you kind of master that, then you can start seeing some other things happen for you. You know what I mean? So like I said, you can stretch the skin. I'm using my thumb at the top to stretch the skin also. You know, I'm using a brush right here because sometimes the hair gets stuck to the head. A lot of times I like to just use combs. And if you went to barber school where I went to barber school at, they ain't allow you to use no combs. So you know not for I mean brushes they ain't allow you to use brushes so I'm so used to using a comb because they never allowed us to use brushes because they feel like they're unsanitary but if you keep you know your brushes clean you get new brushes often then you, it's okay to use them at certain points just like this on a bio fade you actually really need that right so you see the fade you see the blurry the blend is coming in it's matching up like i said because of the wave pattern right up right there where i was kind of brushing it up right there above i kind of want to knock that out i kind of i'm not feeling that that look right there the, the bulking look right there but we're gonna get it we're gonna fix it up i'll probably use my one and a half guard right there to try to clean it up Right now, I'm just, just making sure that transition is is there, right? You know what I mean? This little bulk part, I can work on that in a second. You see where I'm pointing? The whole time, I already knew that I had to go back and fix that, right? But to me, that's something that I do towards the end of the fading on one side. So I'm using the corner of the blade again. And I'm just removing bulk, you know what I mean? I don't want it to be too heavy. I just want to... You know, I don't want to remove too much. I just want to remove, you know, parts of it just so it'll blend in well, right? It's feathering, basically. If uh, For lack of a better term, it's feathering, right? So now it looks a little, little better to me, right? But, you know, it's still a little bit. You work diligently until the blend looks the way you want it to look, right?
and keep brushing you see that so now it looks uh, a lot better you know I can still come back no guard now because I used the one guard and you notice I, two guard system you know, some people like to use the half guard in certain situations I do too but it's rare you know what I mean because you can manipulate the clipper to work just like a half guard without having the half guard on right so uh it's all about technique and practicing and getting you know your style down and adjust adjusting to that and once you get the fade down right then you can come back and knock down the front of it, right? Using the same one guard that you use on top of the head, just making sure the hair in the front is actually laying down, right? You want everything to lay down so when you get ready to do the lineup, it'll be, you know, um, it'll lay down perfectly for you to do the actual line. On this side, we do the exact same thing that we did on the other side. So, uh, like I said, you come back, you use the one guard, make a hard guideline, come back, use no guard, fade underneath, try to take away that first guideline, come back with your one and a half, you know, open the close to get rid of the second guideline, and then make everything neat in between. But I'm going to speed it up a little bit so you can just watch and see how it come out. So then after that, you knock the hair down in the front on this side too. And now you see the fade is good. The, the waves are popping. Everything is looking good. Kind of cleaning up the beard a little bit as we go. You know, so uh, the fade is coming along and that's pretty much it for that. You know, if you have any questions about it, leave a comment in the comment section. But this is pretty much a bio fade and how you get to it you know how to do it using just the two guard technique right now so you want to use the mr outline of detail and mist and after using the mist i mean before you use the mist you want to you know visualize where you're going to put the line that you see you got like cow lick right here one side up one side down a little bit just got to pick the side that you want to start from basically kind of want to start from in the middle starting from in the middle it helps you with balance so you know when you approaching the lineup just make sure you start in the middle make sure you have a agent like what I have in the outline of detail and mist that's going to lay the hair down for you hold it in place also help you get that crispy 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 look that you're looking for right so you see, I use it in every video. Now, it's no enhancements on this haircut, right? Before I even do the lineup. And like I said, like the detailing miss is gonna help you with that. You know what I mean? So look, so you're getting your lineup together. And so, yeah, so we're getting the line together, right? And because it was high on both sides, a little off on both sides, just pick a side to start from, basically, right? So that's what we did. We just picked the side to start from, right? And you just work your way over, work your way across, right? And just to get that clean look. So we got one side done. We hold his head up. You see that? 
we got one side kind of done. Look at it, see what's going on, on the other side. Okay, we want it to line up just like that on that side. So we're looking at it, right? So like I say, you take your time, you look at it, see which way you need to go with the lineup. You know, uh, how to approach it, how to attack it, things like that. So these are all the things that you need to pay attention to, right? And you see, once you get it, boom, you hit the corners. You want the corners to be short. See that? Boom, boom. You just make sure that you get the corner straight, right? Once you get the corner straight, then you everything else to like meet up in the middle, but like where you started at. So now you see the fade, how the fade came out, how the natural lineup came out. You might hit them with, with a little, you might hit them with a little bit of uh, enhancements, maybe, maybe not. But anyway, this is a natural look. This is the natural look with the beard, natural. You see what the uh, outline of detailing mist does. It, it holds the hair in place. It allows the canvas to be dry where you can create sharp and crisp lines and on the other side we have the exact same thing that we're doing you see the beard is coming through nice we blended it got a little nice line on it on this side we do the exact same thing right you start from the middle kind of work your way over kind of see you know take your time with it try to line it up as, as much as possible also use your mirror if you need to you know so the mirror is not going to lie to you it's going to help you out I'm trying to duck out the way of my camera to make sure you get a view of what I'm actually doing. So once you got one side down, you just want to match the other side to the one side that you did already, right? And that's staying consistent, you know, with with the same method that you use on the other side. Make sure that corner straight. It's going to take a second. It's not going to be easy. Make sure the corner's straight. Make sure everything is faded at the bottom to blend in with it. Yeah, you know what I mean? Now, now you're looking like something. You know what I'm saying? Give them the box edge, tight fade, blurry fade. Work on that beard. Hit the beard just like we did on the other side. All natural lines, nothing extra, right? So now that we got the edge up pretty much exactly how we want it, we just like if you want to go back and detail it just to make sure you got everything crisp and clean the way you want it, then you know, take your time and do that. I always say go back and double check the work, make sure everything's lining up, look in the mirror, face the mirror, left, right, look at it, make sure the fade is good, those type of things, right? So make sure the beard is lined up good but anyway the point of this video was just to show you the two guard method show you a quicker way to like or easier way to understand fading right the, the way how everything should transition from light to dark how to fade in between those areas which could be called the gray area between black and white is the gray area right the gray area is where the transition is happening, and that's what you want to fade the dark and light part into, right? But anyway, that's the end of the video. Don't forget, like, comment, subscribe, tell a friend to tell a friend. You know how we do it. Until next time, love, peace, and hair grease.